Pretty good, pretty good. GPS rescue, I enabled it. So today we're gonna to be finally learning how to set up GPS in the quad, this little guy right back here. And the first thing we're gonna do is plug it into Betaflight. Now we're in Betaflight, we have to open up the ports tab here and we have to find which UART our GPS is on. So if you built it yourself or if it's a bind and fly, you need to find the diagram for your, uh, for your flight controller and ESC and find out what UART the GPS is going to. In our case here on the Chimera Pro V2, it's going to UART 4. So we're gonna go over here to the sensor input put GPS on, then we also have to find out what the bog rate is. These are the top three bog rates that are most common in drones nowadays. Ours is 56,600, so I'm gonna be selecting that here. And then we're gonna pop over to the configuration tab here, um, and then just make sure our GPS here is enabled. After that's done, again, save and reboot. And now when we're going to the GPS page, you need to plug in a battery into your drone here for it to get GPS signals. If it's your first time setting up your GPS, it's gonna take a while. When I plug this drone in here, it took me about 10 minutes to get all the GPSs, but once you get the GPS locked, it becomes faster and faster once you plug in that battery. So it should only take us a couple minutes here. In the configuration here, U-Blocks is like kind of the best one out of all, all three of them there. So you have to make sure you have a GPS that supports U-Blocks. So we're gonna keep that there. Use Galileo, uh, we're gonna turn this on, auto config and set home point once. So what set home point once is, is once you arm the drone for the first time, that's gonna be the home point. So if you end up landing the drone or the drone somehow gets disarmed and armed, it's not gonna reset the home point. So now when that's all set up, we're gonna go to the fail safe tab here. And this is where things can get a little bit confusing, but I'll try to talk through it here to the best that I know. And again, this is my first time setting up a GPS. So if there's anything that could be set up better, uh, let me know in the comments down below. But this is what we have here after doing a lot of research. And this is what I found to be the best online. So. This is what we've got for today. We're gonna to leave the defaults here at 885 and 2115. Then the fail safe switch here, we're gonna to leave to stage one. Then everything to do with your fail safe switch is gonna be over here in stage one. So what we really have to do is look at the aux one, two, three, four, and five. Those are your mode channels or your aux channels on your controller. So you have to make sure these are corresponding with what you have set up here. So if we go over to the modes tab here, we have aux one, two, three, four, and five, and they're all corresponding to what's into the stage one on the fail safe tab. If you don't have angle mode set up on your drone, I recommend getting angle mode set up on your drone. So if your drone's like upside down or something and fail safe kicks in, it'll actually level out your drone and bring it back up. So it won't smash into the ground or anything like that. It's a really important one to have here. Throttle, we're gonna set almost the max at 1700. So this is just gonna give you a really big boost of power and get you out of any sketchy situations that you're in. Um, oh, it looks like our GPS there just caught signal. We're gonna leave the angle mode here set to 1000. And the reason why it's at 1000, if we go back to the modes here, it is active at 1000 and then one is in air mode at 1500. So you wanna make sure that when it's in the yellow, that's what you have over here, 1000. Fail safe is hold, GPS rescue is hold, and beeper here is hold, that's just something separate. Stage two settings, it's gonna be um, 1.2 seconds in stage one. So after 1.2 seconds of losing your controller connection, it's gonna kick into the GPS rescue. But uh, this is kind of stage one here. Once you lose connection, it's gonna do all this stuff and then it's gonna go into the GPS rescue after that. Fail safe throttle, low delay in seconds. This is like, it'll drop the drone out of the air if you don't like use any stick input for 30 seconds. This is like the max you can put on here. You can't disable it. For the fail safe procedure, there's drop, land, and GPS rescue. What we're gonna be doing is GPS rescue here. Um, drop just drops the drone out of the air, land, uh, it'll land the drone, and then GPS rescue, it'll bring the drone back to its return to home point, which is what we want here. So the altitude mode, there's fixed altitude, maximum altitude, and current altitude. We're gonna leave this at current altitude. Um, that's when you're flying and it's gonna go up 50 meters. So the initial climb here that we have set is gonna be 50 meters and that's gonna go up from the current altitude. But that's good for most scenarios, um, like mountain dives and stuff like that. Maximum altitude is it'll go to the highest point that you've flown. So if you're doing like a mountain dive and stuff and you've gone up 9,000 feet, it's gonna go all the way back up 9,000 feet and that's not something we want. So we're gonna leave it at current altitude here. The initial climb is gonna be set to 50 meters. So that's about 165 feet. Um, so it's gonna go up 165 feet. That just make sure you're clear of any trees, anything like that, that could be in the way. So ascend rate meters per second, we're gonna leave that at 10 here. That's just how fast a drone's gonna go up in the air um, when GPS rescue is enabled. Return ground speed. So we're gonna set this to 24 meters per second. That's about 75, I believe, kilometers an hour. Let me check. So it's about 85 kilometers an hour. Um, that's perfectly fine for the seven inch drone. If you're using it on a five inch, you can drop it down to 21. 
uh, meters per second, but this is good here for the seven inch. Maximum pitch angle. So we're gonna leave this here at 50. That just lets the drone unplug this. It's, it's getting mad at me here. And you don't need to have your propellers off. I just wanted to mention that too. I'm doing like a whole traveling video tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And you'll see why I have the propellers off for that. But going back into here, the pitch angle is 50. So it'll put the drone in a 50% pitch angle to be able to fly back faster. If you have it like at a low pitch angle, it won't be able to get up to that speed and it'll take a long time to get back to you. So we'll leave that at 50 there. So the descent distance in meters, we're gonna leave that at 20 here. That's just how far away the drone's gonna start coming down. And then the descent rate, uh, which can be 1.5 meters per second. So it's really slow um, when it's coming down. You don't want it to be going fast and they just smash into the ground. So 1.5 meters per second is good there. The throttle minimum is going to be 1100. Throttle maximum 1700. So throttle hover here, we got some red writing. So it's pretty important. The default that Betaflight gives you is 1275. And that's what I left on the drone here. And a lot of people say that the 1275 is good for most drones, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. So the minimum distance to home in meters is 15. So if you're further than 15, or if you're closer than 15 meters away from the home point, it's not gonna kick in. Then the minimum satellites, I set it to six here. That's a good amount of satellites. Usually when you're flying, you get up to like 20, even 30 I've seen satellites. So you'll get more eventually when you're flying, but six is a good starting point here. And then allow arming without fix. So this is something that I'm leaving on because I don't need GPS all the time. Like I tend to fly a lot in open areas, open fields and stuff like that. So this allows me to arm the drone without getting the six GPS satellites here. We can talk a little bit about the OSD having a GPS on your drone. So we have the satellites here in the top right. We have the altitude, so how high you're going and then away from the home point, how many meters away from the home point you're going. And then this arrow here right in the middle, that just an arrow that points to uh, where the home point is or where you are. And then at the top here with the latitude and longitude, if you do somehow mess something up and you crash the drone, you'll have exactly where the drone is. So I guess that's a good thing to have, especially with the GPS, you can just find it that way. And that's pretty much it for all the GPS setups on the Chimera Pro V2. Let's get some propellers on this thing, strap a battery to it and go test it out. Okay, so now we're out here with the Chimera Pro V2 and we have everything all set up in beta flight with the GPS here. We're gonna try to take it up and hopefully it flies. Knowing our luck here, nothing works in the first try. So I have my laptop here in case I need to switch some things around in beta flight. But when I tried flying with the Chimera Pro with the GPS enabled last time, uh, when I was out in Alberta learning everything, it didn't even take up. So I had to go into beta flight and just disable the GPS completely there. So we went through all the proper steps. We followed all the settings and it should in theory fly. So let's try to take it up. I got a landing pad over here. It is a little bit windy out today, but that's like a real life scenario. Like when you're flying these big drones in mountain countries or big huge landscapes there's going to be winds we're going to try both our fail safe switch and our gps rescue mode and maybe if we're feeling crazy we might try to do like the auto land to home walk out in that field a little bit and see if it like, comes back fully to us and lands on the ground uh, but let's get this drone up in the air and see how it goes altitude or home point we have 20 gps signals right now so everything should work so let's go ahead and try to arm the drone first and now we got a little home point down in the bottom middle there All right, and there we go. So it looks like the arrow is pointing back towards us, which is good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click the GPS rescue button. What's happening here? It's climbing up, turning around. That's a little bit weird. I just took control there, brought it out. That was a little bit weird. We'll try that again. I don't, my heart's racing pretty fast here. So I'll fly it out this way and then click our GPS rescue. Boom, hits into angle mode. It's climbing up to the altitude that we set. I think it's 50 meters that we set, right? Why is it pointing, it points down. That's so weird. I don't like that there. Taking control again there. It's like way off. Like the home point set that it's on that mat there, but it's just like doing some weird stuff. Should we hit our fail safe switch though? Coming out over here. And see what happens when we fail safe. So that's if our controller goes out, we lose controller signal. 
It's climbing up. Turning back around. And does the same thing, it kind of points down. It's right over us here. Oh, it looks like it's coming in. And we're gonna take over there. Well, it looks like it's working actually. That's pretty cool. So we'll head over this way and then fail safe. We have our altitude there, our home meters. Whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, we're taking back over here. Looks like it's working. That's cool to know. Okay, so what it does is it, it shoots up really high and then it goes all the way back down to 50 meters. So like it'll get out and then go back down to 50 meters is what I'm thinking why it dips down. And that's just stopping itself. That's bringing itself back here. Yeah, it looks like it's all working good. That's, that's good to know. We finally got this GPS up and running here. I wonder what happens if we kind of like deliberately do it. Like if I went behind these trees, you think I'd lose signal? We're like really pushing it here. This is kind of scary. GPS rescue, I enabled it. And look at that, it's bringing it back. Let's go. That's so cool. Yeah, now I can see why people love GPS on their drones. This is my only drone that I have GPS on, now I want it on everything. Wow, I am happy. I did not think that was gonna work. I thought, definitely gonna have to hop back into the laptop and go over all the settings again and make sure everything's right, but it works. So now what we're gonna do is go take a walk over there and test out the return to home feature. I don't know how I'm gonna do that because I don't like taking my goggles off and getting line of sight of the drone because with the goggles too, once you take them off, your, uh, your image goes away until you have the goggles back on, unless you have like a piece of tape on it or something, but we'll figure something out. Maybe I'll try to keep them on and then I'll stand like really far away. Let's go figure it out over there. Fly this way. Click GPS rescue. And now I'm not doing anything else. My hands are gonna be on the controller just in case I need to take control. Pretty good, pretty good. So this is a drone here and that's a landing mat, the home point, and I'd say it's about 10 feet apart there. So it's pretty good, honestly, like not too far off. So we finally got the GPS working on the Chimera. Everything seems to be working great on this drone now, so I'm super excited. This is my first time getting GPS set up on a drone and everything seems to be working fine. I was following like a lot of steps and tutorials and different videos, but if you have any tips or suggestions to make the GPS better or the rescue mode better on the quad, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to give those a try. And if you like today's video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in tomorrow's video.